God works with joy. Don't pray or meditate as a duty. Realize that prayer is a visit with God and should be joyous. Neither must you pursue your secular activities as necessary duties to be gotten over that you may return to your prayer. In the light of truth, there are no secular activities. You must have regular recreation or you will become stale. Recreation also is to be enjoyed as an expression of God and not as a task to prepare yourself to pray better. And understanding joy in living is the highest prayer of all. In thy presence is the fullness of joy from Psalm 16, verse 11. So some of you may have uh, attended the session one, maybe several weeks ago, maybe a month ago, when I talked about the comparison of joy and happiness. And um, I want to I'm, I go deeper into joy today. Um, so to recap what I said before, <laughs> happiness is a, uh, tends to be a spike, a short-lived thing. Whereas joy tends to be sort of longer term, uh, something that you're living in. That's well. Now I, I want to go in several different directions because the, as I've been thinking about it and reading about it since, it's like different spiritual outlooks have different takes on joy. Um, and what I was talking about. The first time was really surface level here on earth. Um, and instead, you might think of joy sort of like the Eskimos who have, what is it, 13 words for snow. And uh, so I, I want to talk about different approaches, different aspects, and how it, how it relates to our own walk. Um, first, a quote from Buddhism. Joy is an essential spiritual practice growing out of faith, grace, gratitude, hope, and love. It is the pure and simple delight in being alive. Joy is our elated response to feelings of happiness, experiences of pleasure, and awareness of abundance. And they go on to talk about how joy can be experienced in levels of intensity. This is something I'd never given thought to myself. So here are some of the categories they use. There is minor joy, momentary joy, showering joy, uplifting joy, and pervading joy. So as you experience joys, you might sort of keep track of the types of experiences and start categorizing them uh, to see if there's one particularly common type. And then you can consider whether, in fact, you want to uh, consciously move to add some other types of joy to you. Now, in the Christian tradition, um, the majority of, ex uh, of definitions of joy have to do with uh, the traditional Christian outlook. Uh, and specifically, the quality of your relationship with God or Jesus Christ. Uh, words like, God's Holy Spirit produces joy. Joy is a product of Christ-likeness. When we seek God through his word and prayer, we will receive joy. So there, then there, there's an inextricable connection being presented of feeling joy and tight connection with traditional Christian belief. Um, uh, from another online source, joy is an emotion that's acquired by the anticipation, acquisition, or even expectation of something great or wonderful. And um, it talks, that goes on to talk then about uh, the amazingness of biblical joy and that we should expect, experience joy as a gift. Uh, another writer notices or notes that the book of Psalms has uh, more references to joy than any other book in the Bible. 
and it, it uh, mentions just some of the quotes. The joy of the Lord is your strength. For all who take refuge in you rejoice, let them forever sing for joy. God put more joy in my heart. In God's presence there is fullness of joy. So it's, if you will, to me, uh, a sort of unidimensional experience of, of joy. Um, a couple others. Uh, Christian joy is a good feeling in the soul produced by the Holy Spirit as he causes us to see the beauty of Christ in the word and in the world. And um, sorry, almost a, a duplicate of the first one. God's Holy Spirit produces joy. Joy is a product of Christ-likeness. When we seek God through his word and prayer, we will receive joy. Thank God that joy is something he wants us to have. But I'm going to argue that true joy, particularly for people following a spiritual, not a Christian path, doesn't need and shouldn't be tied to specific belief patterns. Um, they're uh, from uh, a website called Spirituality and Practice. Um, it's a, uh, the, the writer there says, joy is an essential spiritual practice growing out of faith, grace, gratitude, hope, and love. It is the pure and simple delight in being alive. It is also the deep satisfaction we know when we are able to serve others and be glad for their good fortune. And this really hit something to me. It rem reminded me of a study I read about who knows when uh, that showed that people who in life feel they have a calling a mission that that they are set, have set out to to do to accomplish uh, to create more good to lift up the frequency of the earth uh, to better humanity or better the life of others even cats and dogs something bigger than themselves they tend, according to the studies, to live longer, healthier, happier lives. So, tying in with the reading I did before, joy comes from deep satisfaction that we know when we are able to serve others and be glad for their good fortune. So, in your proceeding through the world, if you haven't found a calling, a compulsion to become engaged in something that is bigger than you, brings good to more than you, you might consider, consider that. Uh, and then there are many who think of joy as uh, an exclusive experience. And uh, people who are from a broader spectrum would beg to differ. Um, for instance, uh, a Quaker, Michael Burkell, says, because some seem to feel that God speaks only through misery or guilt, it is good to recall that a spiritual leading can begin in joy as well as in sorrow, and either can be centered in love. And then a, a writer I'm unfamiliar with, a, a blog called Only a Sojourner, um, says, to accept and live in the whole of things is to be holy. The unified field of God does not blot out sa all sadness and tragedy entirely, but it somehow and surely coexists with it. So I want to read that again, because to me, this is a really important point. Uh, it's so, uh, you know, at least in my lift work, I find people who can't seem to accept that in the wholeness of life, you can have both the positive, the joy, the happiness, and the sadness even coexisting at the same time. To accept and live in the whole of things is to be holy. 
the unified field of God does not blot out all sadness and tragedy entirely, but it somehow and surely coexists with it. Joy and sadness can live together within us at the same time. And afterwards, we learn to never despair because of the dark sides of things. The dark side is never the whole, although in the short term it often appears to be. So in our spiritual walk, it's okay and not to be frowned upon when you experience both highs and lows even simultaneously. You know, in the work I do with, uh, with funerals and with situations where a family member has died, I have had people come to me very conflicted because the person had been lingering in ill health, for instance. And so while they were incredibly sad at losing mother or father or husband, they were also joyous because the suffering was at end and they couldn't figure out how to handle it. Well, if we allow our brain to become, if you will, multidimensional or multiphasic, then we can perhaps allow ourselves to feel sad and glad at the same time and to know that that's okay. It is part of becoming more whole in this world. It is part of also, I believe, being able to connect to the broader existence of frequencies uh, that is outside the three dimensions that we normally reside in. And from what I just read, someone wrote in uh, a commentary. I need to allow myself to feel my sadness and joy in terms of giving myself permission. I must consciously allow my sadness or grief to pass through me, not assuming their presence means I am somehow bad or defective. It is important for me to not bind them up in judgment. Unfortunately, I have to do the same with joy. I have to allow it when it comes and make room for it. So when it does come, I am ready to receive it. And then she goes on, the writer, to talk about how sometimes she feels guilty about welcoming joy in, even in situations of mixed emotion or also sadness. But she goes on, joy is an essential spiritual practice growing out of faith, grace, grace, gratitude, hope, and love. It is pure and simple delight in being alive. And I will say to you what she didn't write. The same holds when we go experience grief and loss. It is part of who we are, part of our experience here. It is part of an awareness that can stand us in good stead as we go through this world, as we meet people who are hurting and don't know how to handle it. Because we can reach out with understanding. And then finally, she, uh, this, she says, when living fully in the depth of the present, whether with joy or grief, joy gives me some relief from my past and gives me hope for the future. And that to me, particularly in this fairly chaotic time, is really important to, to stress. So even if you're stressed out, even if you're anxious, and I just saw a study that uh, over 50% of the population is carrying heavy anxiety and worry right now. It's okay to be aware of that in yourself and still allow instances of joy and gratitude and the sense of connection with the divine to occur. And where does it all lead? When we're following our path, we don't necessarily know how the passion, the call that we're taking will lead us what we will end up doing. As I was thinking about this and the fact that each of us does have a calling of some sort as part, uh, since we are part of the divine, I'm reminded of the translation of the Bible, George Lamsa's translation of 
Christ's last words on the cross. What he cried out, according to Lamsa, was, my God, my God, for this I was spared. And as I was thinking about this, I found myself sort of flash, you know, sort of how your life flashes through different events. I found myself thinking of the at least half dozen different situations in my life where the odds of my being seriously damaged or killed were extremely high. And yet here I am doing something I never thought I'd do. Walking the spiritual life with you all. Walking a life seeking to lift the world up by helping people be happier than they are. Uh, I want to then look at some broader concepts that different religious outlooks or spiritual outlooks provide about joy. The Baha'i says, joy gives us wings. In times of joy, our strength is more vital, our intellect keener, and our understanding less clouded. We seem better able to cope with the world and to find our sphere of usefulness. So think of this as a different way of what I was talking. Find your sphere of usefulness. And then uh, a channeling by, uh, by Celia Fenn, uh, allegedly, of the Archangel Michael. Many of you speak of joy and wish for joy in your lives, and yet you do not fully understand the true meaning of joy in the context of spiritual service and the work of your soul. See, once again, we have people talking about not surface joy, not momentary joy because, oh my gosh, Christ is in my life, but something with a deeper context and connection. You can be in the state of joy without necessarily being what might be called happy. I haven't figured that one out yet, but I have a glimmering. Spiritual joy is a state of the heart and soul it is produced when the heart and soul unite in the service of a greater good, such as the unfolding of the divine plan on the planet. It creates within the person a sense of contentment, acceptance, and serenity. A deep knowing that whatever might happen, it will all be for the highest good and the greatest good according to divine decree. This knowledge produces spiritual fortitude and strength even in adverse and difficult circumstances. And then from another writer, peace and joy go together. Give good advice and give peaceful advice. When we try not to hate and fight each other and decide to get along, we will experience peace and joy. And then from one of my favorite writers, uh, Father Richard Rohr, Invite joy into your life by staging celebrations, by hosting festivities to mark transitions and changes in your life or in others' lives. Toast moments of happiness you notice as you go through your day. Dance, jump for joy as often as possible. Life is not meant to be endured. It is to be enjoyed. Let me say that one more time. Life is not meant to be endured. It is to be enjoyed.